college educated women voters and there are lots of them in Berwyn, Pennsylvania and in that area outside of Philadelphia where he really needs to make some headway. Right now she has 50 percent of women among uh, presidential likely voters and he has 36 and just to remind everybody uh, Mitt Romney who lost the election was at 52 percent with this group he's got a lot of ground to make up there is ground to make up there's room for improvement and the Trump campaign knows that what we do know also Martha is that national security economic security and health care are the top three issues with women. And I think the reason Hillary has not seen her support in women grow is strictly because of those three issues. But Congresswoman, we also know that, <clears throat> that the stories that have dogged Donald Trump during this campaign from Access Hollywood on have had an impact with these educated women voters, some of whom sort of you know walked up to the, to the line with Donald Trump and then went back right. across to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so, I mean, Melania Trump has her work cut out for him because I think when a lot of those women look at her, they want to know, why, why did you stick by him through all of this? Why is that okay? And uh, women asked that same question of Hillary Clinton That's regarding true. Bill Clinton. And for Melania, this is going to be an opportunity for her to say, look, I, <clears throat> I don't defend what my husband said, but look at what Hillary Clinton does and has done and how she would conduct herself at pres as president. And when it comes to the issues of national security, to the issues of wage stagnation and the economy, you know you're going to get action from Donald Trump, you also know you're not going to get an acceptance of the status quo. But, and that troubles women. They want to see change in I Washington. I hear you, but you know, this is yeah. what I've heard from the campaign really across the board since the beginning, and I've been asking them this question yeah. for a long time. Why isn't there more specific <clears throat> outreach to women? And they always say the same thing, that women care about what everyone else cares about, which I, I believe is true, And I, but it's not demonstrated in the numbers. So clearly, you know, if you're, if you're trying the same tactic over and over and it's not working, you got to try something different. So rolling uh, this yeah. This appearance out by Melania Trump may be that, but there's five days to go. Why didn't this happen a long time ago? I don't know the answer to why it didn't happen uh, earlier. I do know that Ivanka Trump and some of the female surrogates have done a good job being out there. But Martha, there is always going to be room for improvement. And many women have supported Hillary or wanted to support Hillary because they felt like it would be historic to have a female president. But I'm beginning to hear from women who are independent voters, who are in the workplace, who are so dissatisfied with the way she has run her campaign. They are very concerned about the Clinton Foundation. Many of them know I've had that investigation at the congressional level going of that foundation for over a year for months now and they are asking questions yeah. about that I, I because get... they don't like the the way that sounds and the honesty factor is also something that concerns Understood. them about Hillary Clinton. Well, let's play this soundbite from President Obama because he's trying to tap into something uh, with the mail vote and he's basically saying that there's some sexism going on out there. Watch this. There's a reason why we haven't had a woman president before. And I think that sometimes, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to get over the hump. I want every, every man out there who's voting to, to kind of look inside yourself and ask yourself, well, how, if, you're, if you're having problems with this stuff, how much of it is, you know, that we're just not used to it? What do you think about that? Uh, I really thought the entire thing was a little bit inappropriate. And I have always looked at people and said, vote for me because I'm the most well-qualified person for the job. Mm -hmm. And that is what you want. You're going to break glass ceilings when you have people that are prepared and competent who are going to step up and take the reins in a position. Women want those opportunities. Give them an opportunity and they will, they will perform. But do not promote somebody and do not vote for somebody strictly on gender. You want people to excel when they yeah. get that opportunity. That is how you break glass ceilings. So to make this something that is just based yeah. on gender, there are so many serious issues facing our country right now. Yeah, and I mean, we see this toward the end of campaigns. You know, the, the race card right. gets played in some cases that if you're not willing to vote for this person or that person, it's because you're racist, perhaps. And, and now what we're seeing is if you're not willing to vote for Hillary Clinton, uh, you must have something against women. So um, quite interesting. Right. Marsha Blackburn, thank you very much. Good to Good have you to with us with today. You, Martha. Also, so CNN now responding to Donna Brazil's leak of a debate question to the Clinton campaign. Howard Kurtz will tell us what's happening on that front. 
So the president of CNN saying the network has wrapped up its investigation after DNC chair and former CNN political analyst down in Brazil leaked town hall questions to the Clinton team. Jeff Zucker telling his staff that the behavior is, quote, completely unacceptable, but he also defended the practice of paying campaign surrogates. So then the question today, is this matter settled? Howard Kurtz, Fox News media analyst and host of Media Buzz, and Howie, good morning to you. I imagine, based on the piece you just wrote, the matter is not settled. Explain. Not by a long shot. And the quotes that you just read were indeed CNN President Jeff Zucker talking to his staff. It's all based on leaks. Uh, Zucker, who is a media savvy guy, has been since he ran NBC, hasn't addressed this publicly. And we're being asked to accept the notion that, oh, CNN's, and I confirmed this with a CNN source today. Yes, there's been an internal investigation. Nobody at CNN was found to do anything wrong. Apparently, nobody's been punished. But the results of how that investigation was done, somebody had to give these questions to Donna Brazil. Those have not been made public, and that does not uh, inspire confidence. So the column you write, why won't CNN disclose its internal investigation? You, uh, you, you, you want to really know what have, they did, right? Well, I think their viewers have a right to know what they did. If CNN, look, I have no doubt that Zucker and all of the journalists at CNN are appalled by what happened. But imagine if this was Hillary Clinton and new questions had come up about the Clinton Foundation, say. And uh, Hillary Clinton would not address those questions publicly. But her staff would leak that, well, we've looked into it internally and we've concluded that nobody at the Hillary Clinton campaign did anything wrong. Trust us. How do you think CNN would cover that? How do you think all of us would cover mm -hmm. that? So I don't think if you're going to do an internal investigation, the whole reason is to, is to show that you've aggressively looked into it, that you held people accountable, that it's not going to happen again. If you don't make the findings public, you don't get any of that. Well, so now there's a kind conversation about whether or not outlets should even hire surrogates for the campaign. Zucker said this, by the way, quote, one ban Apple does not ruin uh, it for the entire process. They add to our coverage in a very meaningful way. John Klein ran CNN, too, uh, a few years back, and he was on with Megan the other night. And he was making the case that, you know, networks should not hire surrogates. I, I don't know what your position is on that, but go ahead and answer that, then I'll make my point. Well, it is a really good point. Uh, and if I were the king of all media, I think I would say let's not hire and pay campaign surrogates because, you know, some of them are very good. Some of them are very smart. Some of them have shown independent judgment, but a lot of them come on. We know they're consulting with the campaigns. They're doing spin. They're repeating talking points. I'm not sure how much that adds. That's not to suggest that any of them have done what Donna Brazil did, though she continues to deny it, uh, in leaking internal information. Indeed, most of them yeah. don't have access to internal information, but it does. We should examine uh, what value we're getting by paying but people I, who I, just I, yesterday I were argue, on the. I would argue. Yeah, I would argue because okay. I, I do think that they have a contribution to be made here, and whether they're spinning you or not, they have access to people on the inside. I think it comes back to the process. And you as a network, how do you quarantine the process? How do you restrict the amount of information that goes out among the handful of individuals who are responsible for debate prep? And, and your ability to control that information, I believe, is what is critical. I'll give you the last word on that, Howard. Yeah, I mean, I know that at Fox and I know that at CNN, you know, these things are very closely held. You can't have debate questions or town hall questions uh, shared with the whole newsroom because newsrooms are leaky places. But uh, occasionally you're going to have a mishap like this and it does cause some self-examination about whether or not the people that you put on the payroll who are clearly uh, part of politics. Remember, Donna Brazil was vice chair of the DNC at the same time she was a CNN contributor, whether they have dual loyalty and whether, in fact, their loyalty is more to their political wow. brethren than to your network. You need to keep it tight. Howard Kurtz, thank you. We'll check out your column at foxnews.com. Thank you, Howard. Thanks, Bill. Martha. Brand new reporting this morning about the Clinton Foundation. Sources saying that the FBI is ramping up their investigation. So how will this impact the Clinton campaign with just days to go? We will debate. Also, Trump, the opera top of your head, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, that have the capability to do this kind of thing. You mentioned gross negligence. When we were talking about criminal intent, remember when Comey in July said he's declining to rec recommend prosecution because he couldn't prove criminal intent. The entire private non-government unsecured server was intent. She intended to conduct all of the government business as Secretary of State on this private unsecured non-government server. So the intent is clear, gross negligence in allowing America's most sensitive national security secrets to at least be vulnerable to this kind of hacking. Now we have perhaps evidence from the FBI that in fact that was the case. We don't know what's happening on the inside, Doug, but 
what she lays out is a it's a plausible hypothesis, but frankly, until we get through the 650,000 emails that uh, are apparently on Anthony Weiner's computers and might include some of the 33,000 that were acid watched or, or bleached, I don't think we're going to know. I also think we have to get a lot more information about what the Clinton Foundation investigation has in fact turned out. I read the Wall Street uh, journal piece this morning, listen to Peter's comments. I'm as confused as I ever was, and candidly, we're not going to reach a conclusion, I don't think, four or five days before an election. When you, when you see the reporting that Brett and Catherine in the Wall Street Journal is doing now, do you now second guess what Comey decided well, in I, July? I, I will say this, as a trained lawyer, who's read the statute and observed the prior cases. I must tell you, I'm with Judge Mukasey, who said that there is no real difference between extremely careless and gross negligence. I say this as a lawyer, not an advocate. I say it as somebody who is very confused about everything now, because I don't think we have anywhere near all the facts. So you're still not sure that Comey made the right call in July? I, I, I'm suggesting that I think he probably made the wrong call from my perspective as a lawyer, but that being said, the new information that Monica cited that is coming out is to me troubling but not dispositive. Okay, Monica. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in this position today for two reasons. One, Mrs. Clinton made the deliberate decision when she began her term as Secretary of State to install this private, unsecured, non-government server. And secondly, we're in this position because the FBI was not able to conduct a proper investigation to begin with, requiring the reopening of the case now so close to the election. Uh, New York Times poll. Clinton 45, Trump 42. And that same poll margin of error is about 3%. Right. That's the case then. That's a, that, that's a dead heat. <clears throat> We're trying to put all these tea leaves together. Sure. We're trying to read the data. We all sure. do it every hour of every right. day now right. and will for the next five days. What do you think happens on Tuesday based on what you read? Well, I've read all the polls. And in addition to being a lawyer, I practiced polling for 40 years. So right now, I'd say she has a very very narrow and shrinking lead about two points in the real clear politics average the swing states as we've seen are all tightening i think the most you can say is she has a narrow lead you certainly can't predict the election we have a nine or ten percent undecided that typically goes against think it's that high yeah i do that yeah. goes against the incumbent party and we have a dynamic situation, Bill, as you suggest, with all these revelations coming. One thing we can say politically, they're not good for the secretary You know, of even, state. even before we saw this latest, uh, latest couple of bombshells on the FBI investigation, there were massive and are massive realignments happening across the Western world, certainly here in the United States. These cross currents, nobody really has a handle on them yet. Not Donald Trump, not Hillary Clinton. Nobody knows how this is going to shake out. But what matters is where the momentum is and where the trend lines are. When you look in the key battleground states as well as the national polling, both of those things are on Donald Trump's side. Mm. And I see does, it. Does he have the mo? Do, do, do you think that there was a shift perhaps this past Tuesday that started yeah, to sink in. I, I do. The problem Donald Trump has is that because of the way he's conducted his campaign, his base, as you were suggesting in the last half hour, is somewhat more narrow. He's got troubles with younger voters. He's got troubles with college educated voters generally and women in particular. So it's n not clear to me that the momentum will continue. But at the very least, at least this race will go down to the wire. Some of the oh, more recent word. polling, though, Fox News polling and others shows that he is, in fact, narrowing the, the gender gap, especially with women, um, and that he has real openings elsewhere, particularly in the Midwest industrial belt. Which are tightening. Monica's right about that. Washington Times, the Monica memo. America, it's our moment to get our groove back. Get Check our it out groove today. back, groove starting on Tuesday. Thank you, Monica. Thank <laughs> you, you bet. Thanks. Right, what's next? And we've got Fox News polls tomorrow night, which are going to be very interesting to see how they come down. So Donald Trump is trying to keep that momentum that you all were just discussing going, reminding himself that in order to do so, he would have to do something that is sometimes hard for him, to stay calm and cool and collected as he approaches the last leg of the race.
Also in a moment, uh, here's a question you don't hear every day. How do you vote from space? <laughs> Good question. Turns out NASA's top minds are on it, baby. Every four years, America chooses its next leader. And this time, the country makes its most critical decision yet. Nobody can solve problems better than we can. A movement like they've never, ever seen. I want to be the president for everybody. On November 8th, America's comeback begins. Because I've been watching Hillary the last few days. She's totally on a hinge. We don't want any of that. Can you just see the Saturday Night Live version of that? Um, this Saturday night, I keep thinking of the, the Jets in, in West Side Story, like, keep it cool, keep it cool. Um, so that's Donald Trump. He's been firing up the crowds across the country for the last year and a half, but at a Florida rally, he uh, gave a pep talk of sorts to himself, telling himself to stay calm and disciplined, which is sometimes hard for him. Um, maybe they've locked up the Twitter uh, account for him, I don't know, over the last few days. Dan Hanninger is deputy editorial page editor for The Wall Street Journal. Dan, welcome. Uh, good to see you. Lots to get through, so we'll jump right in. Do you think he can do that, first of all? Uh, I think he can do it. He obviously finally understands that he has to after uh, everybody who's ever appeared on Fox News saying that he should stay on target. Uh, the question, though, is, Martha, you know there's a Trump dump coming in the next several days. The Clinton campaign has to change the subject from this FBI investigation. And if they've got anything left on Donald Trump, they're going to hit it with them. And then the question is, can he let it bounce off and keep doing what he's doing now? Stay tuned. Uh, quick thought from you on this foundation news, because I want to just get your reaction to that. The news that the FBI has two investigations that are going on, foundation and emails. Well, you know, I'm so struck, Martha, by the New York Times uh, CBS poll this morning, which has Hillary ahead by three points. Trump has made up six in two weeks. If you would ask anybody in politics whether he could do that, they'd say virtually impossible. This FBI and foundation investigation has created negative momentum for Hillary Clinton. She is losing altitude. And I think what people are trying to absorb is, do they want to get past next Tuesday with a president-elect Hillary Clinton, who is going to be undergoing multiple investigations? by the federal government. That doesn't compute in a lot of people's minds, so I think this is having a big impact. You know, you bring up the possibility of, of the Clinton campaign dropping yet another dramatic bombshell into this scenario, and it almost feels like, like an opera, Dan. <laughs> and you have mapped out and casted an opera in your Wonderland column today in the Wall Street Journal. So how do you see the Trump-Clinton opera? Who are the characters and how does it end is the big question. Well, I had to write a final column before uh, the election, so I came up with Trump the opera and it was because I was lying in bed myself about a week ago saying what can we make of what's been going on it's like an opera and I thought Trump the opera and I started writing scenes and it stars Trump crooked Hillary lion Ted little Marco Uma the handmaiden and I have created these scenes in which Trump and crooked Hillary perform arias indeed Corey Lewandowski and Trump sing a beautiful wall un bel muro <laughs> <laughs> Hillary un Clinton muro. Hillary Clinton it sounds more beautiful than Italian somehow. Well, the best one was Hillary Clinton being interviewed by FBI Director Comey. Remember when she said, I can't recall 37 times? Mm -hmm. In Italian, that's non ricordo, non ricordo, <laughs> non ricordo. And uh, there's a death scene at the end. There's a balcony scene. And uh, I think that pretty much describes what we have been through, a grand opera so for a year and a half. Tell everybody at home, you do have to read the column because it's brilliant. Um, but in the end, who's victorious on the balcony? Uh, the last person standing is Donald Trump. I must say it's preceded by a death scene. So yes, <laughs> course, you, have to it's an opera. you have to read the column, but the last person standing in the opera is Donald Trump taking days worth of curtain calls. Do you believe that will happen? It looks now like it's a genuine possibility. I mean, the momentum is all in his direction. We sometimes talk about momentum in these elections and he has it. You could tell in that sot you just showed, he feels that he's got the momentum. She's meanwhile, running commercials during the World Series about Trump and the women. I think people have gotten past that and they're looking at the consequences of uh, next Tuesday. But we all know in any opera, sometimes there's a twist yeah. at the end. Surprise ending. And there may be. Um, I think you've started something here. I think we're going to see Trump the opera. I remember seeing Nixon in China. Exactly. So it's, it's highly possible that we may see Trump the opera. Dan, great column as always. Thank Thanks. you very much. Great to see you. We'll see you see after you. the election, I guess. Indeed. All right. Stay tuned.
Bill? Cool. Jenna Lee's coming up next and happening now. And Jenna, good morning to you quickly. How you doing? Good morning, Bill. We have brand new national and battleground polling to share with you at the top of the hour. Chris Wallace and Larry Sabato will join us live. Plus, an American journalist missing in Syria for four years. His mom has many unanswered questions. She joins us live next hour on what she knows about her son's whereabouts. That's all top of the hour and happening Good now. Deal. Jenna, we'll see you then 10 minutes away. And what a night for Chicago. So, name the president the last time the Cubs won the World Series. Name it. They are no longer lovable losers. A narrow lead over Donald Trump nationally, 45 to 42 percent, but that is within, pardon me, the margin of error. And the latest Washington Post ABC News tracking poll also shows a very tight race nationally. Clinton edging Trump 47 to 45 percent, also within the margin of error. Let's talk about it with Chris Wallace, anchor of Fox News Sunday. Chris, we now know that there are two investigations, FBI investigations, involving Hillary Clinton, one into the Clinton Foundation, the other into her um, private homebrew server, if you will. Is that what is making this race so tight? I, I think it's a major factor. Uh, I, there was always a, a sense that Republicans would come home as we got closer and closer to the election and people had to choose. Even those who weren't sold on Donald Trump would decide they wanted to vote Republican and not Democratic. But, but clearly, uh, this has boosted support among Trump's base and maybe gotten some persuadable voters along with him. And it's dampened support for Hillary Clinton. In one of the polls that you just cited there, his enthusiasm is now somewhat his supporters enthusiasm for Trump is higher than Clinton's supporters enthusiasm for her uh, and that could play a big role because in the end you know it's it's not just uh, what the support is it's who's people actually go out and vote. We saw that in 2012 where uh, the Clinton team shocked the Romney team because they were able to get more young people, more minorities out to vote than the model that the Romney campaign had set up. Uh, and if that happens for Trump, they could surprise Clinton just because more of their supporters come out and fewer of Clinton supporters do. But you know, you know, the much of Hillary Clinton's advertising, uh, many of the claims she's made about this race are that Donald Trump is too unstable, too um, impulsive, I guess, to be trusted with the nation's nuclear codes, for instance. Now comes this information uh, that five foreign governments apparently were successfully able to hack into the Clinton email server. Uh, and if you think about who those five foreign governments might be, it just suggests a recklessness with with the nation's, you know, secret information um, that is really, I think, damaging to her campaign. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the, it's what uh, Kellyanne Conway, the campaign manager of our Trump, called the scandalabra. I hadn't heard that expression before, but I suspect uh, it'll be trending. Uh, you know, there's just an array of allegations here about honesty, about trustworthiness, about carefulness with information, uh, about the p potential that she could be the president-elect and the, and the target of criminal investigations. Uh, it's messy. It's, it, it is certainly not the way you want to go into the final days of a campaign. And, you know, there's another point here that, that you know, these are historically un- uh, likable uh, candidates in yes. terms of their favorable numbers, unfavorable uh, high ratings for, for both of them. And, and generally speaking, what we've seen, John, is when the focus is on one, they tend to go down. When the focus is on the other, they tend to go down. Well, the focus right now is on Hillary Clinton in an extremely unflattering light, uh, and that's not good for her. Which explains why Donald Trump is, uh, as we just heard, so determined to stay cool, as he put it. Uh, that new survey out of Colorado shows them tied at 39.39. That, that from the University of Denver, which gave me my first job as a 15-year-old lawnmower. So I, I have to put uh, very heavy weight right on Right credence into that. 39% uh, tied in Colorado, but as was pointed out earlier, that leaves something like, uh, well, when you factor in the independents who are running, it leaves something like 13% of the electorate in Colorado that hasn't made a decision yet. Yeah, which I doubt is true. Um, 
You know, I want to go back to something that, that uh, John Roberts said in his report, which is that she has a huge advantage in the electoral map, that, that you look at the reliably blue states, uh, they almost take you to 270. 18 states in the District of Columbia have voted Democratic six elections in a row, 242 electoral votes, leaves her just 28 short. Uh, the, the reliably Republican states, uh, 13 have voted Republican six elections in a row, 102 electoral votes. So he's got to win all of those. Then he's got to win all of the swing states that we talk about, like Florida, like Ohio, like North Carolina. He still isn't close to 270. He's going to win every state that he has any possibility of winning, including the swing states. And then he's got to flip at least one of those reliably Democratic states like a Pennsylvania or Wisconsin or Michigan. So it's the poker equivalent of drawing to an inside straight. He has almost no margin for error. He's got to win every state he has a chance of winning. She has more paths, but there are a lot of more paths opening up for him in these last, well, since last Friday uh, and the beginning of Scandalabra uh, <laughs> than, than we had thought there were. So, yeah, and, you know, this race, is, this race is up for grabs with about four or five days left. The woman who may have coined that phrase is going to be your guest this weekend, I understand. Yeah, I suspect that phrase will be. <laughs>